JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. Hey, I wanted to touch on two aspects of the Paycheck Protection Program. And, you know, one of the things being a, a presenter for Surgeon, you know, I'm of course a CPA, but I get to travel around the nation. In the last 18 months, I've been to over 50 cities. I've talked to thousands of CPAs, talking to them about the tax law. And uh, being a part of the Surgeon family has been amazing because I feel like I'm just always on cutting edge. And, you know, when you're in front of talking to somebody or a group, whether it's 10 or 500 for eight hours straight, meaning me, and in front of my peers, in front of my fellow CPAs, um, you really got to walk in and know your stuff. But what I've always enjoyed about teaching is that I usually walk away and being open minded and listening and unpacking some things uh, has really kind of brought a different flavor uh, as I'm getting ready to be about 50 soon, right? So I've been doing this a long time. I'm gonna be on 28 years, I've had my own practice for 23, and I am really finding how much I loved kind of digging in to the law. So what we're gonna talk about is two aspects of the Triple P that I think is really important uh, from the standpoint of defining what wages are uh, and both of them are going to encompass, well, the banks are asking for wages and I'm hearing wages from a Form 940 from W3 um, with W2s. I've heard 941s. But on all of those, there are different boxes, right? So those that are preparing those forms, we know that that's an obvious and probably those that receive them would say, yeah, I know there's several boxes on it, but let's pull it apart. So I'm going to bring up on the screen here. Um, the first thing is the Small Business Administration uh, sent out a memo, uh, but then also uh, I'd like to look at um, the W-2s uh, from the standpoint of what boxes should we be looking at, okay? So I've had some banks say, hey, it needs to be box one, and I wholeheartedly disagree with that because it, it can be a false number. And actually a false number by being too much. Uh, just as an example, you know, in box one of a W-2, that includes, let's say, for a 2% uh, shareholder or more uh, of an S-Corp, that includes their um, compensation or that box one, um, their self-employed health insurance premiums. So in box one, uh, you're looking at wages plus maybe another 20000 that the law clearly states um, is not wages subject to withholdings. And so like when you're doing qualified business income deduction, I don't want to get too far out, but we do have to look at the entire tax law when we're trying to make determinations. And when you're looking at box one, that is reduced for pre-tax. Um, and when you're looking at the um, PPP rules, Okay, it doesn't say anywhere in there to reduce wages by pre-tax deductions such as a 401k. Um, it does clearly state that if you have pre-tax in essence of like uh, for medical, right? Or the uh, pre-tax on the health insurance, right? Like pre-tax, like section 125. Yes, that's not gonna be included. Uh, but box one is probably the worst number or the worst box to go by. Now it might be the best for the, for the borrower, uh, because that can be the one that's that's the most inflated. Um, and then if you're looking at Social Security, the reason that's not a good candidate on Social Security wages is that it is limited. OK, so what that means is each year there's a different amount, but those wages are not all wages. It's only wages up to the extent of the maximum for each employee. OK, now we know that with PPP, it's not a big deal because we know that only the first $100,000 of wages is going to be included um, for each employee. So you could say, well, we could use Social Security wages, but I'm just telling you it is the most uh, messed up number, right? Because it has these limits. So Social Security wages are usually never used for any purposes when determining things that are based on wages, okay? And then the same thing with box one, right? So when we're thinking about what does the um, amount of wages count when we're doing a retirement plan match, okay? It's never box one. It's never box three, 
right? Because an employer match, let's say it's 3%, you take a regular old 401k, it's always a box five. Why? Because box five doesn't have, other than section 170, uh, 125 plans that adjust all one, three, and five, okay, which is a totally different animal. But box five is the purest figure. When you look at qualified business income, you can only include the lesser of box five or box one, and it always is going to be box five. Um, and the reason that you look at box five, okay, is that, uh, sorry, on box five, okay, that is not affected by a 401k. It's not affected by um, health insurance premiums. Now it is affected by fringe benefits such as taxable fringe benefit of a vehicle, which affects boxes one, three, and five. But I'm telling you, box one, if, if I'm a bank, um, I think that it's the worst number to pick because it's the one that can be manipulated the most, either down or up. So take somebody that you have an S-Corp and box one, if they don't have any retirement withholdings, box one could be uh, $98,000 and then box three and five uh, is you know $84,000. And the difference would be box one would include self-employed is what they call it. Um, it would include health insurance premiums, right? So it's clear in 1102, that that is not wages. So box one would be really a bad choice in determining the wages. Box three could work, okay? But the reason I go with box five is that I don't have to worry about, is it limited for social security wages in box three and then I'm limiting it to the hundred? Box five, Medicare wages, just simple. Here's the wages, okay? And we back out anything above hundred thousand dollars so I have been using box five on all the calculations the banks have liked it um, you know when you're looking at the fairest number okay it would be box five now if you're trying to you're trying to skirt the system a little bit which you should not be doing then use box one okay because I can tell you right now my box one on my personal w2 is higher than box three and five so if I'm trying to get the most out of this, okay, I would be going with box one, but it's not proper because when you look at box one, just in my one example, it clearly states that even though that is being picked up as income in box one, it is not picked up in box three. It is not picked up in box five when we're talking about more than a 2% shareholder health insurance. Okay, because it's not considered wages. It's not considered compensation. So box one, worst number you could pick because it's going to be the most manipulated. Box five is the purest. Okay, it's the fairest and the purest and the most proper in my opinion. All right, so that leads into though the second part of this, which is what are payroll costs, right? So this came from the small business administration and you know they're trying to put some maybe a, a little bit more of a plain language onto the law and when we go now down to uh, talking about how much can I borrow okay so that's the that's the big question right how much can I borrow and we know this right it's just payroll costs and it's your employer paid health insurance employer paid match and then the SUDA, right? State unemployment tax, gather those up. There's your annual cost, you know, do a 12 week period divided by 12, okay, times 2.5, makes sense. Now they go into detail in section 1102 of what's included. And uh, so let me, let's do this real quick. This is from the SBA and it's talking about what can I borrow, okay? What's the maximum I can borrow? So in this, when we're looking at the payroll, okay, it says aggregate payroll costs, right? We're looking at that real detailed payroll costs, right? And it, and I want to point out here that it says F, okay? It just says F. And if, if you're, if you're looking at things literal, then you have to look at everything literal. You, you know, you don't get to choose 
what you look at literally, right? Even if it doesn't make sense, sometimes you're, if you're looking at something and you're literally taking it at, well, but it says that, then we have to take everything literal. And the question is, okay, so what are payroll costs? And this is in the sentence or in the category of determining what the max amount I can borrow is. Because know this, there's a definition of payroll costs when it's time to get them forgiven. Okay, They're not necessarily exactly the same because there are tax credits that have come into play that clearly in the law indicate are not forgivable and or you don't get the credits. Okay, So when you start talking about February 15th to June 30th, which is the covered period indicated in the law, and it talks about excluding things related to employer taxes, employee FICA taxes, and withholdings and things to that effect, okay? That's taking into account that there are tax credits during this period of time that need to be accounted for when you go to get your loan potentially forgiven. And the reason I'm saying that is that, just as a side note, okay, when you go to get your loan forgiven, you may say, hey, here's my wages, and here are my, um, you know, the, the amount that got withheld, okay? But that wouldn't be fair because that client or that, um, you know, taxpayer may be able to come in and say, hey, look, I've got these payroll reports. I mean, my compensation to everybody was, uh, you know, $25,000. Um, and even though the employer payroll tax doesn't count, it's like, here you go. But if that client got, and the IRS even has a nice healthy example. I mean, if that client got $5,000 in these employer tax credits, okay, this isn't related to PPP, but it is related to PPP because I'm talking about on the forgiveness side. It clearly is that you have to adjust your payroll when it comes time to forgiveness because of credits that have been taken. Okay. And there's code sections that talk about what's wages and what's not wages. So there's really two terminologies we're dealing with. One is what are payroll costs in determining how much I can borrow? And then what are payroll costs when it comes time to forgive uh, a certain or all of the loan? Okay. So if you're getting tax credits, okay, which is basically uh, during the covered period of June 15, uh, of February 15th, June 30th, if you're getting tax credits in this time period, okay, then that is going to adjust how much is forgiven. And just think of it this way. You would be going in and saying, hey, I had 25000 in salaries, so I get 25000 forgiven. But what has to be taken into account come time forgiven is, yeah, but you uh, had $5,000 of credit, tax credit, okay? So your overall payroll here was not twenty five, okay? It was less five grand. And when you look at those tax credits and how deep the money can come from, right, to recover uh, the amount over the period of time, there's definitely an opportunity that there could be double benefit and the law definitely touches on double benefit saying you can't get it. So this will make sense because now we're looking at two different ways to define payroll costs for the PPP. So it talks about here, right? What's the maximum I can borrow? And we've got F here. So we're going to go, we're going to pop down to F because we were in E. And in F down here, and this is, this is from what's from the SBA, it says, what qualifies as payroll costs, right? And it lists all these things. It talks about the principal uh, residents of the United States, right? It talks about all the things that are going to be included, okay? Employee benefits, health coverage, premiums. We got the retirement, right? And then we have payment of state and local taxes assessed on compensation, okay? And then this is if you're self-employed, okay? So it's defining payroll costs. Let me give you a little. Let me give you a little, little, little peek down here, okay? Because if you can see, we now have a G, and it says, "Is there anything that's expressly ex excluded?" from the definition of payroll costs. And it says, yes, the act expressly excludes the following. 
So it could be concluded by some that when you're now determining your max loan that you're going to take into account F and you're going to take into account G because in F it says here's what payroll costs are and in G it says here's what expressly is not in the definition of payroll costs. But remember when I said earlier we've got two different kinds of payroll costs to define here. We have payroll costs for the loan and then we have payroll costs come forgiveness. So just remember we have a G down there that says, is there anything expressly excluded? And the answer is yes. Okay. Now keep in mind up here, it talks about whose principal place is in the U S and all this good stuff. So come on up here with me. And this is from the SBA. And it says again, how much do I get to borrow? So we're talking about borrowing. And then this is, this is the government's example, okay? Aggregate payroll costs, CF. It does not say G. And we can't, we, it, it wouldn't even be fair. It would not be fair to say, well, I think they meant to include G. They didn't include G. It's not an oversight. Because when you actually go to the law and you look at code section 1102, it is consistent with what they put in F. Okay. Now, it, it, in another little section, when it's defining payroll costs, there's another sentence that talks about chapters 21, 22, 24. Okay. But then when you go to section 1106 of the law, that is the section on the forgiveness. And in the forgiveness, that extra part of the definition of payroll cost is when it comes into play. So, what I'm saying here is that when you're looking at now the government's example, they're saying, look at the payroll costs and look at F for the definition. And then look what it does in step two. Step two, it says subtract any compensation paid to any employee in excess of 100K, right? And then any amount paid to an independent contractor or a sole proprietor in excess of 100K. Now there's something on that we'll see here in a second, but. Then it says calculate average monthly, you know, divide by two and a half, and then you have this economic injury disaster loan. So, you know, one of the banks that we're dealing with is saying, well, we believe that the payroll cost is FNG, is, 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 the, is the take, and that when they're using this example with dollars down here, when they say example one, uh, no employees make more than $100,000, so they have more than one employee, it's just none of them make over a hundred. So the annual payroll is 120 grand. Then the average would be this 10 divided by 2.5. Max loan is 25,000. Now I, I get that in most, uh, in most examples they're going to use round figures, but if we're looking at it literal, we're trying to determine this like literally, then it would have said aggregate net Payroll. It just says aggregate payroll costs. It would have said G. Uh, the fact that they addressed the hundred thousand in in step two, if there was supposed to be a subtraction of other federal taxes such as so, uh, the FICA employee and employer and in withholdings, it would absolutely be here. Okay, we can we cannot assume that they just made a simple. Um, a, a simple uh, example here. Okay. This is the example. They have F. So we come down here, right? Here's a, if they have some employees that make over a hundred, they have the annual payroll of that. They have to make an adjustment for those that make over the hundred thousand. And then they get a loan max of 250. Okay. Then they run through another example. And in none of these, does it, indicate anywhere that you would need to deduct um, uh, FICA and taxes withheld. Now, you might be saying, why are you even bringing this up, JJ? Because when we're trying to figure out the max loan, they're indicating here's your payroll costs. And so let's be clear, it's all encompassing here. Okay, let's also be clear. Remember when we were talking in W-2? It would be absolutely improper to use box one of W-2 because nowhere in here does it indicate 
that insurance that is taxable to the owner is considered compensation because nowhere in the tax law is it considered such. Okay, in fact, with the qualified business income deduction, it gets to subtracted twice. Um, point is, is that you can't be using box one. It's incorrect. It will get your um, potentially a dollar amount to the customer that is incorrect. And I'm assuming that when it's time to go over it with the SBA, um, that more often than not, too much of wage would have been included would have been included in the calculation, which is incorrect. So, you know, from my perspective now, when we're looking at payroll costs and we're saying, yeah, but G says it expressly excludes these items. Okay. Well, why would it state it again? Okay. Why is it stating again about the U S why is it stating again about the hundred thousand? It already, it stated it up there, right? So what am I talking about here? Up here, it states in F and then they go through the hassle of saying principal residence. Okay. In the United States. Okay. Well, just not highlighting. It talks about the hundred. So to me, it would be a little disingenuous to say, well, I, I'm just going to, you know what though? They, they already netted G out. Well then if they already netted G out, of step one, why does it say again United States? Okay, it it wasn't in F. Okay, they didn't say defined in detail below in F minus G. Okay, they said it's the aggregate in F, and then it says assuming placed in the U.S. and then it shows that there's negative hundred grand. Okay, if they included G, they would have just said G and then popped down to the example. So it, it wouldn't be fair to say, well, they decided to include those two, but for whatever reason, they didn't include the other one. It wouldn't be fair to say, well, I'm sure they meant to include G when you're then saying, but down in G, and this is kind of where the, the, the squirrely part is. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to go with this, um, because I, I think it's actually improper. Uh, and I say that in, a, in a, just a way of, you know, we got to just do it the way we're supposed to. But in G, um, it says, is there anything that's expressly excluded from the definition of payroll costs? And it says, yes. But when it's talking about the exclusion here, it's talking about when you get to the forgiveness. Okay. There's no two ways about it. That when you get to the forgiveness, there are new laws that were in play during the time of forgiveness. And those have to be taken into play. So if you are now looking at this and you're saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, not me. Okay. This is a, this is a bank thinking. They're still deciding, but they're thinking, you know, yeah, I really read this, that we are going to have to have. Um, our client take their maximum loan and then they need to back out federal taxes imposed and withheld from February 15th to June 30th, 2020. So the first thing to know is that um, I, will, I would never um, do a calculation like that in the sense that I don't think it's proper. Um, I wouldn't know if, if a client had come to me and said, hey, I need to tell a government um, entity, the federal taxes imposed and withheld in a, in the future. Um, I wouldn't do it. We're not allowed to do that as certified public accountants. We're not allowed to project in such a way. We can only work with actual numbers. So when it says federal employment taxes imposed or withheld, okay, it says imposed and it says withheld to me, that means it has occurred. And G is, look at in G, they say the principal resident uh, outside the U.S. doesn't count. They talk about the 100,000. So why would they include that same language up top, okay, and not include this down here? Okay, now look, here's, this is really going to prove my point. Should just nail it home. 
Do you see how right here, qualified sick and family leave wages for which a credit is allowed under sections 701, 001, and 003? Okay, this is in the part when you're talking about the forgiveness. Because the forgiveness time period is February 15th to June 30. Okay, and when you're talking about that time period, inside that is the eight week period where someone's spending money to get the forgiveness. So if somebody's in that eight week window and this qualified sick and family leave, and that's straight out of the family's first uh, coronavirus um, act, the new one that came out here just, uh, what, a month ago? So I think when you're going to loan forgiveness, okay, this will have occurred. When you're going to loan forgiveness, this will have occurred because you can't go and get your loan determined for loan forgiveness until after June 30 because you have to take into account the head count all the way through June 30 of your employees. So it's not possible to, in advance, know what the wages are going to be, what the required holdings are going to be. And in a time of crisis like this, when employees may not be able to stay on the payroll, uh, businesses may have to take themselves off the payroll. Um, there's no way really in the spirit of this, it's a paycheck protection um, program, which means it's meant to put dollars and max dollars. I mean, the terminology even says max dollars. So I would agree that when you're getting the loan forgiven, you're going to have to take this into play. And what this is really getting around to is those tax credits. And the reason that it even talks about income tax and the employee and the employer, because the credit can be taken. Okay. It is limited on the payroll tax credits. It is limited to the amount of the employer's payroll taxes, right? But if they have a credit, that's more than in that period of time, the amount they're paying into the IRS, then they can take a credit and it reduce down the withholdings. It will reduce down both federal uh, em employer and employee portion of FICA. Okay, it'll reduce down the withholdings. So I'm telling you right now, I already know I'll be talking to several thousand CPAs uh, throughout the rest of the year, I do a tax seminar every single month. I write it myself, surgeon approves it, and I present to uh, all over the country with this seminar with surgeon. And this will be part of definitely our first, my first show. They call it a show, so we call it a show uh, in May. And um, I don't know if we put that on the calendar, but we'll be sure to uh, be sure to let you know. Anyways. This comes into play at forgiveness. And so if you have a situation and you're, you really are trying to do your best and you're going, well, we're only going to borrow what we can borrow. And it says here that in G we have to exclude federal employment taxes, including the employee employer share of FICA. Um, Okay, if, if we're going to be literal about it, then we have to be literal in what timing? And we have to be literal when we're looking at everything else. And if you ask me, plain and simple, the fact that it does not say G there is not an oversight. It's because G in itself does not affect this because in F, okay, it's clearly picking up and indicating what the wages are. And then in the example from the government, it is indicating here are the things that you back out. There's no mention and it can't be assumed. It, but there's no mention here that you would reduce down this payroll cost for the other items. It would have listed it. And it absolutely makes sense though when you're determining your wages that are eligible to be forgiven that you would absolutely take into account any credits that affected any way, shape or form or any dollar amount of payroll tax. 
So really at the end of the day, here's where we're at. When you're looking at this part of what the government sent out, you need to be aware of this come uh, forgiveness time. Come forgiveness time, the federal employment taxes imposed or withheld during the covered period. That's the only reason they're listing that. There, there, there would be no reason to, um, in a calculation, say, give us the last 12 months of payroll and then in a period of time that does not include that payroll period, subtract out taxes imposed or withheld on wages that haven't occurred. Nothing in the law has ever done that. That is talking about the covered period. The covered period is tied into the forgiveness period, the eight week period in between that. That is why it's talking about the February 15th, to June 30. It would be not proper to go with box one of W2, not proper. And in fact, if, if I had a bank saying, well, we're doing box one, I'd probably say, well, uh, I, you're doing it wrong. And I don't know, I guess we'll just, I guess we'll just have our client um, borrow less than, because if your calculation, including box one, gives the client, you know, 54,000. Uh, but then the calculation that I put together initially is going by box three and it's 48,000. Um, that client can only borrow 48,000 period. Um, now if the bank says you can borrow 55, I'm going to tell that client you can't and you need to borrow 48 because it's about forgiveness time. It's about forgiveness time. So, it's that way on box one, but then when you come to forgiveness time, you need to be prepared that those credits will be taken into account. Okay. Absolutely will be taken into account. And that's what this is all talking about in G. G is not referenced up here when talking about the max loan. So, two different ways that you have to then determine wages. And the reason for all of that in G is that it's a, 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 a defining wages in the time that there's a different set of rules, right? It's like, what's payroll costs for 19? It wouldn't even be proper to talk about the qualified sick and to talk about these other tax credits. They didn't even exist, right? So it's like, well, what constitutes payroll taxes for this period of time? And then now I spend it and I'm after the fact and I'm trying to figure out how much is determined or how much is of it's forgivable. Well, then now we're going to know, hey, it doesn't include these things, which in essence is these credits. We've got four of them now. Okay. And even on top of the credit in the new CARES Act, employers can kick the can down the road with their social security employer tax, right? So whatever their tax is, they can kick it. That's why it is very proper that when we are looking at forgiveness, we need to look at G because part of what this is talking about when it says employer share of FICA. Okay. Think of this. You have a client they're taking advantage of these other aspects. They don't pay in the FICA. Okay. They got some tax credits. They didn't pay in and they didn't pay in all of their payroll taxes because they got a credit. So what G's making it clear in part three of G, which, which I really like, I'm, I'm really glad truly that I got to go through this with the banker because I really wasn't seeing that for uh, now I knew that this was related to the forgiveness part. Um, but you know, I've been paying attention to, well, how do you get the money? How do you get the money? And I've been familiar with it, but this is interesting because when it's time for the forgiveness time, this will have to be an adjustment for sure. Um, and we will know what it is because it is on federal taxes imposed and withheld. Okay. It, I think if, if we were trying to include G, it would say federal employment taxes to be imposed, to be withheld. Okay. It wouldn't say federal taxes imposed or withheld between these dates. 
It, it will for the forgiveness. And then when you look at other avenues or other aspects of forgiveness, they constantly refer to February 15th to June 30th, 2020. And when you go to that example up above, it does not say G. So we can't be literal. We cannot be literal, in my opinion. You know, I'm, I'm putting on my hat when I talk to, you know, I'm presenting. You got to have some authority, right? But it's just really not possible that when we're looking at this, that that a reasoning would be, well, it, you know, I'm going to literally just go by literally what it says. And it says that we don't get to include this. Well, if we're going to go with what it literally says, even when it and, and, and everybody looking at it's like, yeah, none of that makes any sense. But it makes sense to me now. And I think it I think it might make sense to them. It takes a little bit to chew on. It doesn't say G there. It doesn't say G there. And here's why. Because it shouldn't. It should not. All right. Hey, so listen, this is a key part. Okay. On the front side and the back side. The front side is how much money do I get? What do I qualify for? What's that max loan? Well, it's your payroll costs, your employer match, your employer paid health insurance premiums, and your state unemployment tax. Add that together, divide it by 12 times 2.5. That's, there you go. Okay. If we now get into forgiveness, it's like, okay, now we're dealing with what happened. What was withheld for that? What was withheld for that? What credits did you take? What uh, social security taxes were you able to kick down, you know, kick that can down the road? So the thing to be aware of is that that will, and it, it will for sure affect the amount of your loan forgiveness. So it's definitely worth taking a look at that. So, I mean, I, I, I love the exercise and there wasn't, there wasn't really a conclusion drawn other than I drew a conclusion. The conclusion I'm drawing is you need to use box five and that's what i've been using it's the most pure number it's the most fair number you can't jack with box five medicare wages okay it's the most pure number and then i'm concluding that it doesn't say g okay all I, if, if i'm reviewing a law all i can do is go by what it literally says and it literally says f if it was meant to include g it would say G. The reason for that other definition of payroll that's excluded, okay, is on the backside and on what wages are going to count for the forgiveness. Whew. Well, that's down to some nitty gritty. I don't know if you stayed with me. If you did, I sure appreciate it. It's just interesting stuff. Just down in, in the nitty gritty. Um, I'm going to shoot one more quick video, uh, and uh, I think you'll want to tune into this one because I talk about the real estate industry and the uh, professionals that are in it, which kind of really follows follow falls into sole proprietor, independent contractor, and the self-employed. So uh, there'll be a tag to that one here at the end since I gave a little teaser. Really appreciate you tuning in. Um, you know, on this one. Uh, I'd love to get some thoughts on this. You know, am I off base? Um, I haven't been wrong yet. Um, I don't mean ever. I just mean on the interpretation of this. Um, but I think part of it is I just read it over and over and over and reading it and reading it and talking to other people and, and then, you know, drawing my own conclusions. But I also think just knowing um, that the, the background that I have in teaching and then being able to hear from thousands and thousands of CPAs, um, you know, in what you pick up on um, and, and then how you have to go approach it. Um, I think I got the right conclusion. Well, of course I do. But anyways, I, th I think I have the right conclusion because the right conclusion on this is box three is more conservative and more accurate than box one. And when determining max loan, um, I'm, we need to be literal. We need to be literal. Okay. And it doesn't include G. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for 
all those that are sending emails and are making this even more fun than I ever could imagine. I'm kind of turning the corner. Um, I, I was up till 4.30 a.m. last night and, and I'm not getting a lot of sleep each night. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that tonight. And um, catch me Saturday morning if you happen to be watching this tonight. Um, I'll put a link in the body of this, but I'm going to be on a New York City radio station uh, with Josh, another fellow JJ. And then uh, next week, I'll put it too, I'm going to be on the Ledger, okay, which is on One American Network. Uh, it's a nationwide uh, news channel. And then I'm hoping this weekend, uh, I gave a nice, I was asked and, and gave a nice quote uh, to Forbes magazine talking about the PPP. Now, yesterday I gave a quote I was asked for to Fortune magazine. I haven't seen anything yet. And then the day before that, I was asked for a quote with U.S. World and, and News Report. Didn't see anything on that. But this one, maybe they will because I felt like I kind of nailed it in just one nice, concise sentence. What is PPP? And part of that is I'm really enjoying sharing what I'm coming across with all of you that are watching. I'm, I'm honored and humbled uh, because I have had a, a tremendous outpouring and, and, and normally I wouldn't do this, but uh, just going to make an exception here. Um, what is just um, really wonderful here. So we're on the third. So I guess really in the last seven days, um, I've had 239,000 views, okay? And then I've had, this is uh, 21.6K, okay? So that's 21,000 hours, okay, of watch, 21,600 hours And we'll do it this way. Look at that. 23 and 21,006, 21,600 21, watched hours and views. This is last 28 days, but this is, this is, this is really where it started. Look, February, I'm sorry, February, March 27th, right? Cause this flat line, I mean, I was doing videos and maybe just not as many, but so this is this is where this is where things started to go up, right? Is here. So really on you know March twenty seventh, March twenty sixth, uh, last twenty eight days. But then here's the last forty eight hours, one hundred twenty eight thousand. Not at all am I bragging. Um, what I'm telling you is is thank you. That's that that that's what I'm telling you. I'm saying thank you. I'm honored. I'm humbled. Um, I am going to really spend some time going back and looking at the comments. I'm going to take some notes on some of them. You know, some of it I'm having to just do it on the fly. Um, and, um, but, but I'm going to really try and get back to the comments and look at them all. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. Those that tracked me down and uh, have emailed me, thank you so much. It meant so much. Uh, I emailed one of y'all back and said, hey, uh, thank you for that. They did a really wonderful thing for me. I said, uh, I'll send you a JJ, the CPA t-shirt. We, uh, Amanda and I, um, came up with tour t-shirts. I'll show you in another video. Uh, it's kind of neat, but just all the all the cities that we go to, uh, and I'm doing these seminars on behalf of Surgent, which thank you so much, Surgent, but you know, Nashville to Seattle to, um, you know, Chicago and Nashville and New York city and, uh, New Jersey and Atlanta and Wyoming and Denver and, you know, Fort Collins and, you know, Phoenix, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyways, it's, it's, it was a lot of fun uh, doing that. And so we kind of were thinking, well, hey, we should give out t-shirts. And uh, when I'm presenting to CPA firms, so a number of times I've been able to uh, present to CPA firms that are, you know, anywhere from, you know, 50 to 500 uh, CPA firms, like I'm talking to one firm, right? Which is neat. They seem to get the most kick out of these, uh, JJ, the CPA shirts. You've probably seen them around on my social media. Um, and it's just meant to be fun. But then on the back, we list all the tour dates 
uh, that we were at, uh, all the all the cities and whatnot. And uh, anyways, that was more just to say I really appreciated uh, you know who you are. I really appreciated the email and what you're doing, and um, love to send you a t-shirt. So, all right, hey, uh, I you know look in here. I did create a free website. JJ, every website's free though, right? But JJ the CPA help. And it's a community website that I put together for the crisis. And the reason I put it together is I didn't want anybody to misconstrue the purpose of the website. So you won't even be able to find how to contact me on that website. You don't enter in any information. I don't want your email. I'm not looking for, um, I'm not even taking on new clients. Uh, I started doing these videos just for my clients to get the information out. And so I've just been humbled by the, the reaction and it, it, you know, I stayed up all night going through the first families or the family's first act and then the cares act because I was in such a panic for my clients because I just love it. Uh, and I love being a CPA, love working with my clients. And so I was just in it and diving in it. And how do we do it? Cause when you're, t you, you have clients you've been dealing with a long time and they are on the brink of going out of business. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's crushing. And so, well, what can I do as a CPA? Well, we have these new tax laws we can take advantage of. Let's get on top of it. Um, and I think by wanting to get out there with information to my clients, email seemed, I'm sorry, video seemed to be the quickest because I could, I could say one, you know, Hey, here's what I would say to you client. And then I can say it all at the same time uh, at their convenience. Um, but you know, I do know all my clients on a first name basis and who their kids are and, you know, do they play golf or not? And when's the last time we did this or that and all that good stuff. This is all just to say, thank you. I'm, I'll just take, I'm just, I've taken a minute here or a few just to say thanks. I'm humbled and I love it. And I'm so glad that I'm getting able to, I'm, I'm able to share some information that I think is really helping people. Um, I'm not helping people per se. It's just, we have these wonderful programs out here that are providing this relief. That's what's providing the relief. That's what's the great thing. I just love it that I get to help explain it so that others get to take advantage of the help that is out there. All right. Hey, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and, um, I'm hashtag JJ, the CPA, uh, anywhere you can find me on social media. And then I will just say this, you've never met such a great, wonderful set of people than you watching right now that you made it all the way to now. Love you. All right. JJ, the CPA out.